Hello, uh, my name is Pedro Zeckeli. I'm a faculty at the University of Southern California. And uh, I work on sort of uh, big data and using the web as sort of another database uh, for your applications. So this was the, the title that uh, appeared in the program. Uh, but uh, what I'm really going to talk about is you know, basically using the web to solve hard problems. And so let me give you uh, the outline here. So I'm gonna talk about what do I mean by hard problems? Uh, how do people solve them today? What uh, do we bring to the table? What's our solution? And then what kind of impact have we had so far? Uh, so by hard problems, I mean hard problems. Uh, you know, like helping with healthcare, uh, helping uh, investors decide where to invest their research dollars. Okay, helping with human trafficking. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't holding the mic uh, where I should. Uh, and uh, I'm going to talk today mostly about uh, human trafficking and illustrate the technologies that we're building in the context of human trafficking. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, human trafficking. Uh, human trafficking is the third illegal industry after illegal drugs and arms trafficking. Uh, it's a pretty big industry, $32 billion profit per year. Uh, staggering statistic, average age of uh, girls that are taken to prostitution in the U.S., This is how much the pimps make per girl per year. And I'll leave it to you to do the math of how many clients each girl has to see so that a pimp can make this much money. Another interesting statistic. The budget, the advertising budget online is $45 million. And so, for us, this is an opportunity. This kind of budget leaves a pretty big footprint on the web. In fact, there are thousands of websites that cater to this industry. And there are millions of mil and millions of pages. And so what uh, we're trying to do is help law enforcement and NGOs combat this problem. You know, help the victims and prosecute the bad guys. So what do they use today? This is the tool that they use to come through the internet to find the victims and to find evidence to prosecute the bad guys. And I'm not gonna, I'm, I want to illustrate what they do with Google but I don't want to show you escort ads uh, because they're very graphic. So I'm going to illustrate it uh, in a different domain, recipes. So if I go to Google and I look for a strange dish like sekai goulash, uh, this is uh, a goulash from southern Hungary. It happens to be named with the same name as my last name, so that's what's so cool about it. Uh, and you start typing that, and Google solve does autocomplete and finds it. And then you click, and you see the recipe. So this is what I mean by Google finding the dots. It's very easy to find a specific piece of information on the web with Google. And I can read the ingredients, and it says, you know, it uses Hungarian sausage. And I says, you know, what's in Hungarian sausage? I can look that up in Google. It's another dot tells me how much fat and protein is in Hungarian sausage. And so uh, what I can do with Google is find the dots, but I have to sort of find the connections. I have to go from one page and say, okay, I want to look this up. And so if I wanted to do this for all the ingredients in goulash, okay, you know, it would take me five minutes. If I want to do this for every Hungarian recipe, this would not be possible. 
uh, and then for every cuisine, not possible. So the idea is, you know, can we actually do this, build an application, build infrastructure that you can, on tools that you can do this at a massive scale in any particular domain. So we want tools that allow you to build an application that sense goes out to the web, finds all the dots, and then also finds all the connections. And so if I go back to the human trafficking, Google doesn't actually work as well for human trafficking as it works for recipes. If I start typing an escort name and saying blue eyes and so on, Google does not autocomplete uh, because all this is based on what people mostly look for. And you know, fortunately, there aren't that many people on the web looking for escorts. Uh, so Google doesn't autocomplete. Uh, so you know, this is in part one of the reasons why you want technology that is built for a specific domain. So let me tell, tell you about this kind of software that we're building and how I think applies to the kinds of applications that you might have. So if you think about it, it's so pretty simple. This, the idea is, in a sense, very simple. Uh, building it is a little bit more difficult. So the idea is, OK, I have to go find all the web pages, all the escort pages, and download them. <laughs> then I need to extract all the data from them. Then I need to figure out how they are connected. This is all the hard part. Then I have to put all this in some kind of database so that I can search all this information as if it was a database. Uh, so crawling uh, is of a is mostly solved problem. You have a piece of software, goes to a website, downloads a page, follows the links, downloads those pages, and it keeps doing this all day long. And uh, so we have uh, crawlers that are coming the human trafficking web and download about 2,000 to 5,000 pages per hour. So we have 50 million web pages of escort ads, you know, so of a staggering number, and we don't have all of them. We actually don't have, we have a small percentage. We have the most popular websites. Uh, and so let me show you a little bit what the text of an ad looks like. Uh, so you see there's purposeful obfuscation so that uh, people searching on Google, like law enforcement law searching for a phone number in Google, doesn't hit this page. Uh, <clears throat> you pay in roses, not in dollars, uh, and so on. And so if we want to really treat this as a database, we need to extract structured data that looks like this. Uh, and so we're working on extractors that basically use machine learning and crowdsourcing uh, to basically train domain-specific uh, extractors. So in this case, we're doing it for human trafficking. But if you were in the movie industry, you could imagine so getting information from reviews or tweets or whatever, where uh, your standard uh, so person, organization, and place extractor is not going to give you what you want. So the idea here is we take these sentences and uh, we ask people in Amazon Mechanical Turk to annotate them. So this is a crowdsourcing service where you pay people to do very small tasks, and you pay them a very small amount, uh, like two cents per task. And so we can collect basically 5,000 annotations of sentences where people highlight where do they mention, say, eye color and hair color. Uh, and so this is solved what the interface looks like. And you could do this for any kind of entity that you're interested in. So if we get 5,000 annotations, uh, then we can feed this through a machine learning component. We use conditional random fields. And what it produces is a sort of ready-to-use trained extractor software so that you feed it text, and it pulls out you know, whatever you trained it on. In this case, eye color and hair color was my example. 
And it costs about $100, and it would take about one day, which uh, really beats having a programmer try to write a custom extractor in Perl or, or in Python. So once you get all this extracted data, it typically looks like this. Uh, so you're not getting clean data. So this is, for example, what one of our extractors gets for body weight. So it says, you know, the weight's 130. The weight's 480. Uh, the weight is 133 pounds. Big, beautiful woman. It's the weight in this domain. Uh, 52 kg. So they come in different units. They come unitless. Uh, and really what we want if we want to have a database where we can search is we want normalized data, like everything in kilograms. So 130, what is that? Kilograms or uh, pounds? So in our domain, we say, OK, if it weighs more than 99, it's pounds. Uh, makes sense. Uh, and then uh, so we have basically scripts to clean up all this data. So we're trying to really build a database where we can find connections. So once we have all the extracted data, uh, here's an example of a connection. So we have an ad for a person called Mary here. And she, we extract a phone number, the 222 number. And then there's another ad, Lucy. For Lucy, uh, it mentions two phone numbers, you know, the 222 number and the 777 number. And then you cross this with the police database, and the 77 number hits there. So you know that you know, there's a chance that this bad guy is not just victimizing Lucy, but you know, because Lucy works with Mary, also Mary. And so this is of the idea of connecting the dots. And you know, the, the kind of technology that we're building basically allows you to combine data that you extract from the web with your corporate databases. And, and this is of a big plus because you want to leverage your sort of corporate database where you have sort of really the information that your company or your business is handling with all the information that you can gather from the web to do sort of smarter business intelligence or whatever. So uh, you know, the two things combine. This is where you really get the ba biggest bang, where you combine the web data with your data. And uh, so this is sort of the, the tools that we're building. Uh, but we're, we're also working on connecting the dots just based on text. Uh, so here are excerpts from three escort ads. And if you look at this, it's pretty obvious to us that these ads were copy-pasted in some way. Uh, you know, they were either created by the same person or they basically were copied from somebody else's website because they look nice. And in this you know, human trafficking domain, it is very often that the pimps write the ads for the women they control. And, you know, like everybody, you copy paste. You don't just invent the ads. And uh, our software is able to figure out, to cluster among the 50 million ads, these three ads as being similar, even though they are quite different. Uh, and so this is another kind of uh, technology, basically using this of modern minhash LSH, so with these hashing techniques to do document similarity, even though the documents are not completely similar. The other thing that uh, we're working is on tools which leverage image similarity. So in this example, I have an image of an escort here. And, uh, <clears throat> We can search the database of all the images downloaded, which is 20 million at this point, and it will find this photo, which is uh, actually happens to be the same person. Uh, I so blur the image a little bit, but you can see the you know the hair is similar, the background, the bed is uh, same color. It's a very different pose. 
uh, but it uses uh, the new deep learning, machine learning technologies, and it can so figure out that these two images are very similar, which again is very useful because then you can connect those two ads as probably belonging to the same person, which is something that then allows you to build this sort of uh, trail of you know, where has this woman been, which different cities, even though they're posting different photos and so on. And, uh, you know, in a sense, you know, uh, we don't actually use these tools, but the idea is, you know, law enforcement can help, you know, find the people who are doing these things uh, and, you know, the, the bad guys and prosecute them. So once we basically, this is sort of our technology stack in a very sort of, uh, outline way. So we have 50 million ads. They come sit in HDFS. We use Hadoop, MapReduce. And we basically uh, are building, we have a cluster of just 20 computers. You know, 50 million is not a really huge number in big data terms. Uh, and we can basically process the whole data set in about two hours to build uh, you know, this connected database that has all the connections that then can be searched to try to so figure out, uh, you know, help people figure out what's going on. Even, even the simple question of measuring how many victims are there is not something that has an answer right now. People just don't even know that. You know, you know there's so millions and millions of ads and you don't even know how many people are, you know, being subjected to this. And so we're hoping that this kind of database, in addition to helping victims and helping law enforcement, is going to really help people get a grasp on so what's really going on here. Uh, so roughly know how much money there is. Uh, because you know, the websites are public websites, you know how much they charge for ad. Anyway, so, uh, and the system runs on basically this kind of Hadoop environment with all the extraction, all this sort of linking of the information, and we use Elasticsearch as our backend. So everything at the, at the end is sitting in an Elasticsearch cluster with 20 nodes. Each one has about 300 gigabytes of memory, so they are pretty big nodes, so the whole data set fits in memory. So you, you get basically a, a, a query interface. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not allowed to give a demo uh, uh, <laughs> of the system. I'm allowed to show you a screen of how it looks like to the users. And I blocked all the information that could be, you know, has you know, identified the person. So you type keywords at the top. So I'm looking for Tony in Las Vegas. Uh, and then it matches all the ads that somewhere in there have Tony in Las Vegas. And then you get a faceted browsing interface. So it it sort of looks like an Amazon page. You're, you're looking for something, you type the keywords, and then on the right, on the left, you get facets by location, by ethnicity, by hair color, by eye color, and so on, uh, and because you're trying to find you know, the specific people and draw the connections. Uh, and then the image similarity, you just click on an image and say, find similar. And so uh, we, you know, what, what's the impact of this? Uh, so the, the impact is that uh, the system is currently being deployed to several law enforcement agencies and you know, that you know, they are basically prosecuting the bad guys and NGOs that are helping the victims. And uh, you know, I don't actually know, you know, how they use it. Uh, I just, you know, heard that even one week after this was deployed, they were able to find an underage girl, uh, you know, in the system, which is one of the things that they want to do. 
And so, uh, you know, at USC, you know, we're applying this to human trafficking, but uh, what we're really doing is building generic technology to do this kind of application in any kind of domain. So we've, we're doing one for investigating material science research. So where should the government invest in material science? Uh, and uh, you know, this could be used, we're doing one about companies, we're thinking about doing about one about companies, basically have a database about every company in the world and how they connect in terms of the kind of business they do and so on. And so just uh, to give you closing, the team, so the effort is led by USC. Uh, our subcontractors are Columbia University, uh, Inferlink is a, a local company here. Uh, they do social network analytics, Na NASA, and Next Century is in DC, you know, work closely with the government. And uh, you know, thanks for all the people who are contributing here to this effort. Thank you so much, Pedro. Um, I know this seems to be a little bit off topic, uh, but some of the executives of the studios have seen some of the karma work or this relational database, semantic technologies, and seen huge applications to everything from metadata to other things within the studios. Um, and so that's why we kind of brought this out here. And uh, I thought that that kind of just jostled some ideas and some minds and putting that out. Um, do we have questions? Got one over there, Josh. Do you have it? So I was a little unclear on where the um, actual pieces are in terms of the technology. I've I know previously about Karma a little bit. Uh, you talked about using um, the Amazon uh, Mechanical Turk to train a system. What are the pieces? What are the different pieces? Okay, uh, so let me go back uh, here. Uh, so. Yeah, the, the piece about karma is, so the, the way that this really works is we run all the extractors and we create these very messy structured sources that are the extractions from text. And then we have many different kinds of extractors. We have extractors that people have written by hand that produce JSON or CSV or XML. So we have all this data coming in from all these different software pipes that are doing extraction, uh, you know, are getting things from databases, we're combining all the information into one schema using our Karma tool. And then we're doing additional analytics on it to do, discover the connections. And then we store those again back in the database. And then at the very end, we end up with a JSON format that is compatible with RDF, which is what we used previously. So it's a graph database that we store in Elasticsearch. We can also store it as a graph database, but currently it's too big for most of the graph databases that we tried. Uh, so uh, so yeah. the, the extractors are bespoke for whatever the problem domain is. Yes. And then the what are the other component are, are there any other components that are also bespoke just for whatever the problem domain is or are those other reusable modules so okay so the 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 extractors themselves are not reusable but the technology to train them is reusable so the idea is if i need a new extractor for a new entity in some domain it takes me a day and about a hundred dollars to do one that's customized for exactly what I want. Uh, and so this is of generic. Uh, uh, we are currently using many extractors that other people wrote before that were just Python code. Uh, but you know, given the scale of the number of entities that we want to extract, we want to use this of generic trainable technology. And then the, the document linking technology. Uh, so the minhash LSH is a reusable package that we're building that can do basically similarity based on text and then similarity of records. 
So this was, I remember, was something that was very interesting to you know, the folks we talked in the studios where they wanted to sort of match up the titles of movies in reviews and everything. It's, this, it's a similar kind of problem. Uh, and uh, you know, matching up the authors, awards, everything that somehow is referred in text in slightly different ways. Uh, this is of a generic technology that can help with those problems. Uh, and uh, so we also use the same kind of technology for structured records. So you have your database, you acquire a new studio, they also have a database, but you know, all the people's names are slightly different, they're not normalized to the same vocabularies, and you need to match them up. You know, this kind of thing helps you do that. And then the the query interface, you know, the image similarity, okay, this doesn't really care what the domain is. Uh, it's a deep learning module. It works for with whatever images. Uh, and then the GUI is also generic. So, uh, you know, it doesn't care what these features mean uh, and so on. And the other thing is all the software in this project is open source. You know, the whole stack, it, is op you know, our software is op open source and everything we use is under a permissive license. So there's no GNU code in here. It's all Apache or MIT or Mozilla license. So everybody can use this for whatever they want. Uh, For, for for some reason, I'm thinking that this uh, this type of technology could be used, for example, to identify source of leaks for illegal torrent sites, where you you know you want to really identify who was the original committer to the torrent site, and I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of similarities this way they upload, and something like this could be used in that way. Anyways, that was just my comment. That's an interesting idea. I, I know some people have, I mean, I don't know how these sites operate, but I, I know people who want to do this to sort of find illegal hackers uh, because they hang out on forums and this kind of crawlers go into the forums. And so I think, you know, this kind of thing could be done. Okay. All right, do we have any other questions out there? Oh, you know, and other applications could be creating golden records, you know, upstream much further, um, and making sure that that is the right information. So you, I've seen some of the other Karma stuff where it, it will sit and show you three, four, five, six different databases and what it's filling in for that area, and you could say, these four all match, this one's different, and you could immediately identify what's wrong. So... Well, thank you so much, Pedro. Really sure. appreciate it.